It is time for the second edition of UCF Football Now 2022. UCF coming off a huge season open uh, season opening victory, 56 to 10 over FCS foe South Carolina State. I'm Mike Bianchi, sports columnist of the Orlando Sentinel. That man over there, you know who he is. He's Jason Beatty, UCF insider, UCF beat reporter for the Orlando Sentinel and OrlandoSentinel.com. Jason, you want you want to grade the team? Yeah, let's let's break it down. Let's start with the defense. What grade do you give at UCF's defense? I'm going to give them a B plus. I think they did a really good job of slowing down the run. Uh, that was something they struggled with at times last season. I think SC State averaged less than four yards a carry. So that's an improvement, obviously, you know, from last year where they struggled. It's a good sign heading into Louisville. Um, but I think a B plus just because that's something you expect and they they could have maybe played a little bit better, but overall, so, so, solid performance. On the flip side, Mike, how would you grade John Rice Plumlee's performance, his first start since 2019 at quarterback? Well, I, I, I give him an A plus. I mean, he throws for over 300 yards, four touchdowns. He, was, he showed his speed, 86 yards rushing for not having played quarterback in that long. And I real, realized it was an FCS opponent. I'm giving John Rice Plum, Plumley an A plus. How about the fans in the season opener, Jason? What what grade do you give them? I personally, we're going to give them an A. Uh, I had some PTSD pregame from last year's season opener against Boise State. Uh, there was some thunder and lightning in the area, but the student section stayed strong. They came through. I mean, you have to think about it. It's a Thursday night game against an FCS opponent. Obviously, it's not a sold out game, but for what happened and who showed up, I, I was impressed. I mean, again, Thursday night games are always interesting for fans. We were watching the game. I remember in the press conference, you know, UCF's offensive line, I think you commented that they didn't make that much of a push for the run game. How would you grade UCF's run game against South Carolina State? Uh, uh, well, the, the, they did run for almost 300 yards, but a lot of that came late when South Carolina State was pooped. I'm going to give them a C. They didn't get much push. In the first half against an FCS opponent, Isaiah Bowser uh, didn't even average four yards a carry. I think he carried 23 times for 80-some yards, so he's their main running back. So I'm giving them a C. They're going to have to run the ball better against the good teams early in the game. All right, let's finish off by by quickly giving an overall grade for the team. Overall grade, solid B. I think they were just – they need to clean up some things. Yeah, I'll give them a B plus. Uh, whenever you blow out an opponent 56 to 10, um, yeah, I think you deserve a really good grade. So B plus for me. All right, let's get into some more quarterback talk. John Rice Plumley, obviously he is the talk of UCF Night Nation. Is he the real deal or do we still need to see more against a, you know, a, a FBS opponent before we make a judgment on John Rice? I think for right now, in this moment, considering his past, I think it is fair to say that he is the real deal. I understand the opponent might not be as strong as a Louisville or even, a, even an interconference opponent like a you know SMU or Cincinnati, but the fact that he made his first start in a couple of years, he was playing quarterback again, they let him get those reps. I mean, he was playing still late, early in the fourth quarter, late into the game. Um, I, I, he impressed me as a passer. Yeah, I was very impressed. I mean, he laid some nice balls in there. Uh, three Again, 308 yards passing. Obviously, Dan Mullen, former Gator coach, who is now an ESPN analyst, he thinks John Rice is the real deal. He made him a Heisman sleeper. So I, I don't know if I'm going to go that far, but <laughs> I, I, I think he's the real deal. I don't need to see more, but obviously we all want to see more. All right, interesting question. UCF blows out. Their season opening opponent, Oklahoma, blows out their season opening opponent as well. Who's going to account for more total yards this year? Current UCF quarterback, JRP, John Rice Plumley, or former UCF quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, who of course is transferred to Oklahoma. I think John Rice Plumley could come close, but in the end, Dylan Gabriel is going to have more yardage. That's just because of, you know, he's going to be throwing for thousands of yards this season. Um, you know, JRP is going to make up for it with his feet. Although it was ironic, Dylan's first touchdown at Oklahoma, I watched some of the game against UTEP. His first touchdown was a 12-yard run, something we didn't really see a whole lot of at UCF. Uh, personally, for me, 
think Dylan Gabriel is still going to throw for just way more yards than John Rice. And while John Rice might finish with more rushing yardage, overall, Dylan Gabriel is going to have more offensive yards. Au contraire, mon frere. I think it's going to be JRP. I think he's going to run for at least 1,000 yards this year. And if his passing was any indication Saturday, uh, heck, he may throw for two or 300 yards a game as well. So I'm going JRP. Let's do a little rapid fire one word answers to the following questions. One word to describe UCF's special teams performance. Concerning. Uh, you know, they, they, yes, they had the block punt return for a touchdown, but besides that, we already talked about Daniel Barsky's, you know, missed field goal. They had a block punt. Uh, they had a punt return touchdown that was called back because of holding. This is an area that UCF struggled in last season and they have for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, they really haven't figured out, you know, special teams for whatever reason. So concerning is the word I'm going to use. I'm going to go awful on this one. You know, all, for all the reasons you just mentioned, and they would have given up a, a fake punt for a first down if South Carolina State <laughs> punter doesn't, doesn't try to punt the ball 14 yards past the line of scrimmage. So I'm going to go awful on this. That's a big concern for UCF. All right, one word to describe USF's blowout at the hands of BYU in their season opener. Unsurprising. I think there was a lot of hype by USF fans. I was a little bit surprised to see the high confidence level from USF fans on social media and the message boards. Unsurprising. The first play out of the gates was a 75-yard touchdown for BYU. That's my word. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of with you. I'll go typical. Uh, typical <laughs> USF has not been able to get their footing under Coach Jeff Scott. He's obviously on the hot seat this year. USF is, yeah, their their program right now is in the doldrums. So, yeah, typical. All right, one word to describe Cincinnati's loss to Arkansas. Expected. I think when you lose a quarterback like Desmond Ritter, you know, they, they, they still, I think, have a question at quarterback. Ben Bryant played later and played better in the game as it went on, but – uh, expected result for me. I didn't think they were going to beat an Arkansas team. That's that's pretty good this season. Yeah, I'll go un, unembarrassing. The, Cincinnati should not be embarrassed. They made the playoff last year. Uh, nobody really expected them to make the playoff this year. They lose a, a, lost a lot from last year's team. And Arkansas is a good team. They had a breakout season last year under new coach Sam Pittman. They're expected to be really good this year. So they're, they're, no shame in losing to Ar Arkansas. All right, one word to describe UCLA's horrible attendance for their first game. I think it was like 20, 25, 26,000 at the Coliseum. Yeah, abysmal is the word for me. Uh, it, it, it was abysmal. I mean, they. I think it was the lowest in ounce attendance, and that's that still was a lie. That number was not accurate. If you look at some of the videos and whatnot. So uh, maybe if they counted everyone twice, 25,000 would have been accurate. <laughs> I'll use a word you said earlier, expected expected they don't care about college football in big cities like la or new york no college football is in the south that's where they care about it in the midwest in the big cities not so much all right a new feature this week we call it something or nothing all right is it something or nothing that thomas castellanos did i pronounce that white right played over Mikey Keene when John Rice Plumley went to the bench? I think it's nothing that Thomas Castellanos played over Mikey Keene. I think it's really important to put it into context. A minute 41 left against the FCS opponent, the game's well out of hand. Look, Mikey Keene is the real backup quarterback, and you want the freshman to play, see what he can do. He had a nice run. It's nothing for me. I've got nothing as well. Um, I don't think Mikey Keene's going to transfer. It doesn't do him any good to transfer right now. He can he can you know wait till the end of the season if that's what he decides to do. So I'm going to go nothing for now. Is it something or nothing that Daniel Obarski continues to miss field goals? It's something. I mean, it really is. I understand. Maybe the timing was a little wasn't ideal, but look, we talked to Gus Malzahn on Monday. He mentioned. He said that he needs to make those kicks. I mean, he's he's already cost them games in the past. And uh, it, Gus has talked about Daniel Zabarski's uh, improved confidence, but it's something that he continues to miss kicks like that. 
Oh, something. Absolutely something. They're going to need their kicker eventually. We saw, heck, we saw Sunday night. LSU needed their kicker to kick an extra point, and it got blocked. So, absolutely this is something. UCF is going to be in some close games this year, and they need their field goal kicker to make field goals. Is it something or nothing that Louisville has a shorter week of preparation than UCF this week? I'm 50-50 on this. I'm going to go with nothing. Just because, look, they play week to week every week. I understand it's a couple extra days for UCF, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think it's I don't think it means anything really in the grand scheme of things for a game on a Friday night. Uh, I'm with you. I'm gonna go nothing here. There's plenty of time for both teams to get rested and game plan for the other. Which brings us to Louisville. Is it is it, is it dangerous that Louisville? lost their didn't just lose their season opener opener they got hammered by a Syracuse team that's not expected to be that good yeah that result was surprising for me I mean I watched that game they've you know Louisville just it didn't look like Malik Cunningham really was having success running the ball um you know I don't know much about Syracuse football but I know it's not that great you know recently so I was surprised by that result I think it is dangerous that Louisville you know you look at last year's game against UCF of course, Louisville has to travel, but Louisville's going to be hungry for a win. And they really are. I don't I don't think it's dangerous. I, I think it's actually an advantage for UCF because Louisville had some high hopes this year, and suddenly they come out of the box and get a hammer. And I think this puts doubts in Louisville's mind about how good they are. So uh, I think this is actually a good thing for uh, for UCF. We, we all know the injuries last year against Louisville. UCF loses on a fluky play at the end of the game all the injuries dylan gabriel goes down among others if dylan gabriel and and all those other others didn't go down with injuries last year against louisville what do you think ucf's record would have been you know it's interesting dylan gabriel's injury literally happened on the last play of the game so they probably still would have lost that yeah they would have lost lost that game game, yeah so that that game is still a loss um you know maybe they beat smu i don't think they beat cincinnati um Cincinnati was a playoff team obviously last season uh they obviously would have beaten Navy or you'd think they would have beaten Navy so you know maybe a 10 lot two lost season 10 wins you know and look if they had won a couple more games maybe they wouldn't have played Florida in the Gasparilla Bowl so maybe it worked out exactly how it was supposed to for the Knights yeah I don't think they would have beat, beaten Cincinnati either they heck they might not have beaten SMU SMU blew them out last year so yeah i'm with you maybe it would have made the difference of a win or two but not a major major difference difference for a ucf's season all right jason beady are you ready for my favorite feature rapid fire let's get started in our season preview show we suggested that ucf would sell out versus louisville Do you still believe that? I still believe that. I know you might not, but I still do because it's still, you look at last year's game and how much UCF wanted to win that game. And I think it's a date that's been on the calendar, not only for the players, but for the fans as well. You mentioned it earlier, the punt, that failed punt. I don't know what happened there. It was really confusing. Have you ever seen a punter punt the ball 14 yards past the line of scrimmage, Mike. When it, when if he'd kept running, he would have gotten the first down. I, I, no, I've never seen any, anything like that. I haven't seen an explanation on why he punted it. If he didn't know the rule, is this Australia? Was is the guy from Australia? There's a lot of Australian <laughs> punters in in college football. No, I have never seen anything like that. All right, you wrote about Mackenzie Milton joining the radio broadcast team at UCF. Is there anything Mackenzie Milton doesn't do? Do you think maybe he has a future in broadcast? Mike, you might want to watch out for your job, man. He's coming after your radio job. I talked with him. He had a good time, and uh, I think it's a great fit for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he'll be he'll be good at that. Um, you know, whatever he does, he's going to be good at. No question. How about his former coaches, Scott Frost, Josh Heupel? You mentioned Dylan Gabriel earlier. Maybe they could be. Maybe he can be put in this group of, former coaches, players that UCF fans root against. Who do you think they root against the most, Scott Frost or Josh Heupel? 
Oh, come on, Jason Beattie. You know the answer to that. They rooted against Josh Heupel when he was the coach at UCF, <laughs> for crying out loud. Uh, they obviously uh, loved Scott Frost when he was here. Uh, Josh Heupel and the relationship with UCF fans, not that good. So Josh Heupel is the answer here. I don't think there's any question. All right, I got one for you. We all know Scooter Magruder. He lives in Orlando. He's a YouTube sensation. He, he does all of these funny videos. Did he nail his things that UCF fans say video? Uh, we're going to watch a little bit of it right here. I was Florida. I wouldn't want to play us again either. I bet they keep ducking us. Oh, they weren't trying. USF. USF isn't even in South Florida. Who else do we have to beat for us to get respect? Who's going to be our rival in the Big 12? What are they going to say when we start winning the Big 12? JRP is winning the high. They wait till I graduate to sell alcohol. Charge on. Charge on. Go night. Yeah, he absolutely nailed it. I, I really particular, uh, in particular, love the part when he was talking about, you know, what are they going to say when UCF starts winning in the Big 12? He made a, made a video a couple years ago, and after UCF beat Florida, in the Gasparilla Bowl, this was a bet he had to make. So it was funny to hear him say, you know, JRP is a Heisman candidate and all these different things. So he absolutely nailed it for sure. Yes. You know who else nailed it? I think the college football playoff, they nailed it, expanding 12 teams. Here's my question for you, Mike. Do you think it would have been easier for UCF to make the playoff under the new format had they remained in the AAC as opposed to going to the Big 12? Reminder, it's the six top conference champs and six at large bids. So easier yes. if they remained in the AAC. Yes, absolutely. They would. It would have been an easier path to make the playoffs had they stayed in the AAC. I'm not saying the Big 12 is going to be. You know, it, 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 I'm not saying the Big 12 is the SEC. But yes, I, if they'd have stayed in the AAC, they would have had an easier path. Of course, they would have been much poorer because of the TV contract in the AAC. So I guess you take the money and take your chances. So. Uh, all right, final one. Tell us about the fan of the week. Yeah, this fan of the week is is pretty cool. They they went with space themed UCF shoes, really clean shoes. I, I'm really glad that you let them borrow your shoes, Mike. That's really nice of you. <laughs> These are some pretty cool kicks for sure. Absolutely, I love the fan of the week feature. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of UCF Football Now. Don't forget to watch us at OrlandoSentinel.com. We're on YouTube. We usually drop about every Tuesday. So uh, next week, be looking Tuesday. We'll be breaking down the Louisville game for Jason Beatty. I'm Mike Bianchi. We'll talk to you next week on UCF Football Now.